our nativity scene set up under the altar, but it's looking a little bit empty. So I'm going to tell a story. It's one that I think you probably know pretty well already, so I hope I'm going to get some help along the way. Just over 2,000 years ago, a young lady called Mary lived in a town called Nazareth. Joseph was a carpenter, and he was engaged to marry Mary. One day, an angel called Gabriel appeared before Mary and said, Greetings, favoured one. Mary had never met an angel before, but Gabriel told her not to be afraid. He had come to give her some amazing news. Can anybody tell me what that news was? No? She was going to have a baby, yeah. A really special baby. His name was Jesus, and he was the son of God. Just imagine how Mary felt. It had been quite a day. She'd met an angel and been told some really incredible news. Not long after this, the emperor Augustus decided that everybody in the land should register to pay their taxes. Mary and Joseph needed to travel to Bethlehem so that they could register to pay their taxes. But Bethlehem was a long way away, and there were no cars, no trains, no planes in those days. Well, Mary's baby was due to be born soon, and she had a really long, uncomfortable journey ahead of her. When Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem, the town was really busy with people who needed to pay their taxes. Mary was really tired, and she needed somewhere to rest. So Joseph went around Bethlehem, trying to find somewhere for them to sleep. But everywhere was fully booked, Eventually, an innkeeper gave them some space in the place where he kept his animals. Just like this. It wasn't very comfortable, but it was dry and it was sheltered, and Mary and Joseph were able to rest. Later that night, Mary's baby was born. It's always that easy. She didn't have any clothes for her newborn baby, nor a crib for him to sleep in. So she wrapped him in strips of cloth, and she placed him in the manger where cows and sheep ate their hay. That same night, on a hillside close to Bethlehem, were some shepherds watching over their sheep. A bright light appeared in the night sky, and the shepherds were really scared. As they hid, an angel appeared, and he told them, not to be afraid. He'd come with some more amazing news. The Son of God had been born, and they could find him lying in a manger in Bethlehem. Brilliant. Thanks, guys. This was the most exciting thing the shepherds had ever heard. And they rushed off to Bethlehem to see the baby. When they arrived at the manger, they were filled with joy at the sight of this newborn baby. They told Mary and Joseph that they'd been visited by an angel who had told them that Jesus was going to be the saviour of the world. Everyone they spoke to was amazed by their story. And Mary treasured their words and she pondered them in her heart. Now, there are some more characters that will appear in our nativity story. These are wise men, the Magi. They've also started a journey to visit Jesus. But they've got a long way to travel, and it will still be a few weeks before they arrive at our manger scene. Now, as we light our Advent candle week by week, each of the candles reminds us of something different. Today, our candle represents the prophets. They're people who proclaim God's will in our world. Our reading from Mark today told us about a prophet called John the Baptist. John the Baptist is a bit of a strange character. He's somebody who walked around the desert eating camel hair. 
wearing camel hair and eating locusts and honey. <laughs> he didn't eat camel hair. That's not nice. Don't do it. <laughs> but John the Baptist is really important in our stories about Jesus because he's a messenger who tells us that the Son of God is coming. And he tells us that we need to be preparing the way of the Lord and making his path straight. Knowing how to recognize God can be really difficult because although we know he is all around us, we can't actually see him. When we celebrate the birth of Jesus at Christmas, we recognize that because of his arrival, we know who God is. So although nobody's truly seen God, we know him because the way Jesus lived his life, the stories he told us, the way he lived an example to set for us, it shows us the things that are important to God and it demonstrates how we should be living our lives. The really amazing thing is that over 2,000 years after Jesus came to us on earth, we're still sharing the story of his birth. Our eyes have been opened, and because of that, we know God in the world today. The Psalms tell us that your word is a lamp to my feet and a light on my path. And because of this amazing gift in Jesus, we don't need to struggle to find God anymore. We're not stumbling around in the darkness trying to find the way. Jesus is this amazing light, like this star. He shines up the world shines out in the world and leads us away from darkness, lighting up our lives. So through our own faith, through our actions, God is visible in the world around us and he appears to us in person through the people who follow him and the way we choose to live our lives. Amen. <laughs>